feel free to answer or not answer any questions that you feel comfortable with or do not feel comfortable with. Okay. So, please tell me your unit, years of service, and enlisted branch. I was in the U.S. Army from 1968 to April of 1971. Served in Vietnam every day in 1969. Were you drafted or did you join? I was drafted, but after basic training was over with, I found out that I was gonna be a grunt, which is a gr uh, ground pounder. Mm -hmm. And so I signed up for an extra year. When you found out you were going to Vietnam, were you afraid? No, I was pretty young and not afraid of anything. How old were you? 58, I was just turned 20. No, not quite 20 yet, 19. 19. Oh, I'm supposed to look at the camera. <laughs> you can look wherever you want to. If you're comfortable answering, what role did you play in Vietnam? What was your job? Door gunner. You know, rat a tat 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 tat. So, yeah, plus I was aircraft armament repair too. Mm -hmm. So I'm the one to put all the missiles in and then went out flying and watched the lieutenants and the COs fire them and not miss. So, yeah, that was, that was my job for a whole year. What did you do for recreation? What's a net with a soccer ball bouncing it back and forth to each other? That was our recreation. And we had movies there sometimes. John Wayne movies. Yeah, whoopee. So, yeah. Were there any drugs that went around? What didn't go around? <laughs> uh, yeah, I've had some over there. I don't do it no more. But one joint, as big as your finger, could knock five of you out because it was dipped in opium. Opium? <laughs> Yeah, uh, but then were the good old days, but I don't even ever want to go back there. So I just wanted to get out of there. I didn't really like it there. So too hot. Sometimes it was 130 degrees there. 130? 130. And sometimes in a rainy season, it would rain for five or six days and the water would be three, four feet deep walking around it. Pretty bad. I was in... Canto, and a plane landed in there, and some soldiers got off, and I was standing close by, and I want to say that uh, one of the newbies, we call them, you know, I'd already been there for six months, so I'm a, I'm a specialist now, mm -hmm. um, grabbed somebody's gun and took it to his head and said, this is for world peace, boom. Killed himself right there, right in front of me. Gray matter all over the wall. You know, he could have took us all out if he wanted to. But uh, that's another story too. What events happened to you physically that still affect you today? I got PTSD. I'm very observant. I got security around the whole house now, so nobody gets in. Also, I'm very alert. I'm a counter how long it takes to get me to a certain area. Steps. <coughs> and what else? Would you say that you blocked out most of your time in Vietnam, or has it stuck with you? Oh, it just stuck with me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm only at 70% for PTSD, but uh, I did come down with the Agent Orange. Anybody that's got... Their foot stepped in Vietnam, got Agent Orange, uh, had a heart ischemic heart disease from it, uh, diabetes from it, and I didn't ask for none of that stuff either. It was all from Agent Orange. Was it easy to transition back into society after your time in Vietnam? Uh, it took me a couple of years, because every time I hear a siren at night, I'd take a dive. You know, because that was an air raid siren for when we were over there. That was that. Were there any short-term mental or physical effects? Or would you say most of what happened stuck with you throughout your life? 
I think most of it stuck with me the rest of my life and always will. But I do go to the um, vet center for not for people talking. There's six to eight of us that talk, but since the COVID came on, there ain't been no talk, you know. So I had lost contact with them and I missed that because all of them people had problems too, you know, so. Yeah. Can you describe what it was like coming back home after being in Vietnam, how society treated you? Well, they treated me very bad in Seattle and uh, it was pretty hard. I didn't think society, they all thought we were baby killers and stuff like that, but that's let them think what they want to think, you know. But, you know. Yeah, it took a while to get adjusted. And that's why I was going to the VA and seeing a shrink also. Not that I'm nuts, but I uh, was seeing a shrink. Can you explain your experience with the VA? I fought to get what I got, you know, because the VA did not want to, the government did not want to pay anybody Agent Orange in the beginning, which was back in the uh, 80s, you know, they did. But they finally started letting loose, and then in 1999, I went, came down with the diabetes, and they covered me for diabetes, and uh, they, um, I've had nothing but good experience with them now. Nervous. <laughs> Don't be nervous. All right, the last question is, are there any stories or particular events that you will never forget? Every time I go to the wall, the, the not the real one, but the, the regular one, I go up there and see Warren Officer Lieutenant Brittenham, black guy. He was our CO for a pilot. He got killed on his last flight. That was terrible for me. And then he was supposed to be leaving in about three or four days. And he lived in Chicago, so. Yeah, that was a bad experience. And then another bad experience that I'll never forget is uh, we landed a helicopter here, here crisscross, crisscross. I'm two down. The guy up here cleans his barrel for the minigun and shoots and kills the guy clear, clearing his. The bullets were still in the minigun. So that was a bad scene too. Um, I'll never forget that. I don't think I even told my wife that one. So, you're privileged. So, this is what you get when you get out of the service, the DD-214. You know, and that tells you everything. Aircraft armament. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what these all are. They send them to me all the time. Here's a, a medal. And this is a National Defense Medal. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm gonna act like a nut because I am sometimes. <laughs> and uh, the rifle was just a uh, regular shooter. But the uh, M16, I was an expert. Yeah, that's what that is, expert on automatic. And I don't know why I got four stars there for the Republic of Vietnam. I wasn't there for four years. I don't know what that all means. United States of America, Vietnam. Ooh. That's a big one, so I don't know what that is about. Hmm. I never look at the stuff. They just send it to me. They never sent me a report saying I was a four-star general, so... I was a sergeant, E-5. Yeah, I was an E-4 graduating from the school in 1968 and then going to Vietnam in 69. And I was there one month and they made me a sergeant. So, that was pretty good. I gotta have a shot of vodka here. All right, thank you. Thank you for your time and thank you for your service. Oh, 